What's going on guys? It's Erica with Not Your Apple GDC and today we are going to talk about ceramic or water stones versus DMT diamond stones. This conversation is becoming very trendy lately because everyone wants to sharpen their knives, which is fantastic. That's what we need. However, there are a lot of opinions floating around on which one is better and what they're used for, etc, etc. So before we begin, I will preface with the fact that these are my opinions, my experiences from Erica's planet. I don't want to hear any arguments in the co in the comments like we can converse, but I'm not going to argue with you about anything because the, this is literally like what I have experienced with my little tiny hands and my little tiny eyeballs on Erica's planet. Also, I've been sharpening for a very long time since I was a kid. My dad used to make knives. I've always been obsessed. I've been sharpening for a long time. So just keep that in mind, okay? We're going to talk about the pros and cons of water stones and the pros and cons of diamond stones today and what they really should be used for because they're very, very different. They both work fantastic, but like I said, they're for totally different things. So first, let's start with the knives, actually, because what you're sharpening, what steel you're sharpening, will really influence what stone you should use. So basically we have two, two types of steels, right? We have a steel like Nitro V, which is very fine grained in my opinion. It, it is um, a very good steel, but it's so clean and, and refined that this may work better on one type of stone, whereas let's say S30V, which is a really, a really toothy steel, this may work better on something else. So first of all, you have to kind of check out what, what you're sharpening because obviously any steel can be sharpened on either one of these stones, but some of them do work better on one as opposed to the other. So like in my opinion, S30V, pretty toothy, this one tends to like diamond stones, in my opinion, and then something like Nitro V, which is more fine, uh, tends to do better and take a better edge with something like a water stone or a ceramic stone. Now, water stones and ceramic stones are different. The water stones that I have are soaking stones, so they're Japanese Nanawa stones. They have to be soaked for at least 15 minutes before using, and my ceramic stone, which is a shaft and glass stone, does not need to be soaked. It, it's a splash and go, so it just needs a little bit of water for the lubrication, and you're good to go. And then the diamond stones that I use are the DMT brand ones. These have um, synthetic diamond plates with some little pores to catch the material that you are removing. So let's talk about the pros and cons of the, the water stones first, my soaking stones. So right here i'm going to pull out this is a 220 grit water stone that's been soaking uh the pros of a stone like this are that especially with the coarse ones these are great for reprofiling and taking out chips and nicks and anything that ha is pretty damaged right so the good thing about this is you can move your knife back and forth like this very easily and you really have a feel for what you're doing and it's really good for reprofiling and getting damage out of your blade um they you know there's a huge range of uh grits as with the dmt but like typically speaking a, a 220 grit water stone is going to be fantastic for removing damage from your edge and it gives you plenty of space to move back and forth and reprofile and really create a brand new edge. Another good thing is uh, there are not any pores like on this one. So if you are like learning to sharpen, you're not hi hitting that bumpy road really. Like, you know, these, these are a little bit of a learning curve. They work great, but the pores, uh, those little catchers can be really difficult for people first coming into sharpening and learning so this is really great. Um, like I said, the, it's really about feel. The feel of a flat water stone 
is, is much easier to work with, especially for beginners, as opposed to a DMT. Now, the not so good thing about these, in my opinion, is kind of like the care. So these need a little more care than the DMT stones. They have to be soaked. You need to keep them lubricated. They're more fragile, so it's very easy to shave or chip the sides off. They're just fragile. You got to keep them uh, somewhere safe and secure. And the biggest thing is they, the surface gets uneven. So you need a lapping stone to even this out, out of, after a little while because what will happen is the areas that you're typically using will become dipped and the stone gets uneven and then it's obviously not going to work very well. So you need a lapping stone to flatten this out after, let's say, 100 sharpenings, right? Every 100 sharpenings, you really should be flattening this stone out with a lapping stone to get it nice and level again, then it's good to go. Also, cleaning these isn't the easiest thing. Uh, at least for me, I, depending on what grit I'm using, sometimes just like a nice cold water bath will work, but especially with the finer ones, I need one of these little Nagura stones. So this is what I use to clean my 1,000 and 8,000 grit stones. Uh, I'm gonna try to pull one out of the tub here to show you the metal particles that have built up. It's been soaking for a little while, but hopefully, sorry, the lighting is so bad. Hopefully you can kind of see that in the middle it's clean, and then we have two strips of metal uh, build up on the side from use. I will just take this Nagura stone and clean this, and this is like an, uh, basically it's an eraser. I will use this to clean the metal out, uh, but it's, you know, it's a little more work than the DMT stone because the DMT stone has those uh, catchers, which it's super easy to just take running cold water and use your hand and like kind of clean it out uh, from my experience. So basically if you're, if you're a beginner freehand sharpener, the water stones or the ceramic stones may be better for you because you can really feel what you're doing better. Uh, they work really well for all types of steels, especially the finer grain ones like Nitro V. Uh, S45VN, in my opinion, is also another one of those like glassy, finer steels. Magna Cut also falls into that realm depending on the heat treat. So um, they work great for toothy steels like S30V as well, but it's, it's going to give you a little more of a like refined edge, I guess. Um, I've also noticed that typically speaking on water stones, the traditional Japanese stones, etc., uh, the super steels like Maximit, um, they, sometimes it can be a little trickier to get an edge quickly on a water stone if you're using one of those really high hardness super steels. It's not impossible. If you use a low grit, you can move that material faster. But generally speaking, like you're going to create a burr and move the material faster on your edge on a on a diamond stone if you're working with a if with like a high hardness steel like Maximit or something. Um, these really move material quickly. So if you're on a time crunch or something, or you're you're sharpening a super steel, the traditional water stones may or may not be ideal for you. And also, there's like tons of stuff in between these. These are not the only options. Uh, there's something called like a Veneve stone now, and there's like these super vitrified stones. I just, I don't have any experience with those, and um, I probably won't, um, you know, until later on. But uh, yeah, I, I do realize there are other options. So now let's talk about the diamond stones. So diamond stones are great. They have their place. Um, also, pricing on these can be all over the place, guys. Just go to sharpeningsupplies.com if you need prices. Okay, so DMT stones, diamond stones, synthetic diamond plate kind of like plastered onto a plastic little holder here, right? So these also have their place. Uh, the good thing about the diamond plates is they move material super quickly, especially with like a, let me pull out my 325 grit here. 
So this blue stone is my 325 grit coarse diamond stone. This will move material within like a few passes, guys. I mean, you you take like an S30V bug out that needs a fresh edge, like maybe five passes on this and you're already gonna have a burr. Uh, they move material very quickly. They're really efficient and they're so, so hard that if you have a super steel like Maximit, 10V, 4V, anything like that, this is going to move that material no matter what. That will move that steel very, very quickly. Uh, depending on your skill set, the pores can be a plus because like I said, it's catching the metal and you don't really have to care for this as much as the water stone. It does not need any soaking. These are splash and go. You literally just put a little bit of water on and you're good to go. Uh, the catchers for me work fantastic because it catches the material. All I have to do is give it a quick little rinse with some cold water after. It's a breeze, doesn't need any soaking or anything. Um, however, the con to this is, like I said, these pours can be a bumpy ride if you're learning how to freehand sharpen. I made a whole video about this with Nicole where I started getting her into sharpening. She wanted to learn how. I started her on these because I did not have the water stones yet. And she was having a really hard time navigating these pores with the freehand sharpening because it can be bumpy if your angle is off. And then the whole thing is trashed and it's a nightmare. So if you're, if you're learning how to sharpen freehand, um, you might not want to start on a DMT stone if you're somebody who doesn't catch on to things quickly because you, you do not have a good feel with these, right? You don't have a good feel. It's not a level surface. You, you're not bonding with your stone and feeling everything that you're doing because you're not really in control with these. With a traditional water stone, you're in control of it. The diamond stone, especially with these pores, this is in control. This has decided its surface. You don't have a, you don't have a say in that. Like you can't make these pores disappear. Um, also, let's see. So the diamond stones, um, they don't, they don't like leave as pretty of a scratch pattern, knock on wood, as the traditional stones do. I have done polished edges with my, with my 1200 grit extra fine stone. I have absolutely done that, but I did notice it just took a little bit longer because again, when you, when you can't really do that, that back and forth motion, it's just harder to like, polish and refine the edge if that makes any sense. So like you can absolutely polish an edge on a DMT stone. It just might take a little longer. And for me, I unfortunately uh, can't do that back and forth reprofile motion as easy or at all on the DMT stone. Like on the water stones, I just put it on a dish towel and I can just go to town and reprofile. I have videos on that. However, with these, they're, they're a little small, they're a little light, and the pores do make it hard to do that back and forth sweeping motion that you can do when you're trying to polish an edge or reprofile it and like get chips out and stuff. So essentially, for me, I really like to use the DMT stones for my toothy steels and my really hard steels. So, or, if I, if I have a, uh, a refined glassy steel that I want to make really, really bitey, I'll use a DMT stone. Basically, if you need, if you need grit on your edge, the DMT stone is your go-to. Uh, so you can, you can take an, uh, a, a glassier steel like S45VN, do like a, a 600 grit DMT edge on it, just like a fine grit. Um, you can surely do S45 on this and that's it. And it will give you like a crazy bitey, gritty edge. Um, or if you want your edge to be more smooth and glassy, you can go to a water stone and, um, make a very refined edge. Like I said, it really all has to do with what steel you're working with because they all tend to enjoy some stones over others. So, um... Yeah, typically for me, if I want my knife to have a lot of bite and grit, I will use a DMT stone. If I'm really refining the edge uh, or reprofiling an edge that is severely damaged, I'll use the water stones. Um, like I said, this is all 
personal preference from Erica's Planet, I'm going to do an actual sharpening video with these. Um, I'm actually going to do a video with the bug out where I'm going to purposely dull this on a coffee cup. This already needs to be sharpened. It has a couple chips in it, but just to like prove a point, I'm going to dull it on the bottom of a coffee cup and record the entire sharpening of this knife so you can see what I'm talking about in terms of reprofiling. So the next video that I do, uh, if all goes according to plan, will be purposely dulling this and resharpening it to show you guys how to do that if your edge is damaged. But yeah, let me know down in the comments if you have any other questions. Hopefully this helps a little bit with which stones you should uh, pick. Personally, I love having both of them because they're all for different things. Um, but if you're on a crunch for money, um, you can't really go wrong with either one. Just like look at your collection of knives. Generally speaking, what type of steel do you, do you have? Do you have more toothy, gritty tool steels or toothy stainlesses like S30V or maybe some M4 tool steel or whatever? Do, do you have stuff like that? Or do you have more refined stuff like Nitro V or S45 or Magna Cut? Um, maybe, maybe just look at your collection and try to figure out what you have more of and then choose what stones you want from there. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to start sharpening now. So I will see you guys on the next video. Go use your shit, learn how to sharpen your knives, and I will see you on the next episode. Love you all.